everybody, this is Enrico, and I am back again on your computer screen. So, if you guys are doing well, it was my birthday a few days ago. I had a really good birthday. Hope you guys are enjoying the summer. <laughs> Subscribe if you want to see me talk about different topics pertaining to East Asian pop culture as well as other current events. Click the like button, click the notification bell, which I honestly never really care too much about. So, China is making the dumplings sour. Because, before my birthday, there was technical difficulties with this very popular live streamer. He is very well known on this site called Taobao. And it is a site where many people come and they sell different things. And he, this guy, is known as the Lipstick King. His name is Li Jin Kwai. And oh my goodness, he has over 64 million followers. And these followers will buy anything that he sells to them. They listen to his every word. They enjoy just seeing this guy show products <laughs> so it was this particular live stream he was going on like usual he has guests on his show and out of nowhere they bring out this red velvet cake that has oreos as wheels and the base of it was white as well as the stout and many people were like, hmm, that looked kind of like a cannon tank. How can we connect the dots for a cannon tank? <laughs> and then people who really care about the history of China were like, ding, 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 oh yeah. The Tananan Square Massacre that happened on 1989. June 5th. Everything goes on and all of a sudden that stream got cut got cut out <laughs> like got demonetized like it lost all its funds from adsense just snip snip gone people were like what oh what happened like we were enjoying this then many of his fans started to put two and two together like oh lord did they miss the government do something they're like oh, they're like, oh yeah dang they don't want to hear nothing about the tananaman Square Massacre because it's like a blemish in the conservative government's history. So they ban history books, articles, anything. It's, it's censored, basically. Is that you can't even look it up in China on the internet. It's not going to come up. <laughs> it's blocked. You can look it up anywhere else in the world, though. So everybody just surmised that <laughs> they must have said, okay, no, this show got to go. And I got to wonder about this guy and his camp, the people who help him with his shows. Who in the back brought this cake out knowing that it was a sensitive topic and that it's basically banned all across the board? And then to show it, on a live stream with millions and millions of people. Mind you, the younger generation don't, don't even know about this history. They know nothing because it's banned and it's censored. So now it's bringing light to this time in history. And many people were like, <sighs> like here we go again with this. <laughs> but I honestly think that this was sabotage. Because we have to think of what has happened in the past with the government's acts and how they have tried to ban things that they feel, well, they say, 
that influence the youth, especially with it's Pride Month, with a lot of the gay web dramas that if it gets past a certain view count, they're like, no, ban censor, they will ban the actors that are in it. It is very much that people who watch stuff can't have thoughts of their own and can't come to their own conclusions on whether they want to watch and support or they don't. There are many people that sneak a lot of things in and try to watch stuff on the low because the government is very much, it's either our way or no way. And it's, it's just ridiculous to me that this is something that is still going on. I do think that the government had it out for this guy in the beginning because he's the lipstick king. And that goes against what China would probably want the youth to see as far as him putting on lipstick and him putting on makeup and facial mask and all those things like that. And it has nothing to do with his sexual orientation because he could just be really good at selling stuff. And I've seen his interviews and he said that I was selling stuff for years, even before I started live streaming. And I just took what I learned and put it onto the live stream. He talked about how it was hard for him being famous and how it just happened out of the blue. But he has a really good head on his shoulders. He seems pure hearted. He seems like he really wants people to just buy the products and that he sells stuff that he feels like is good. He tries the stuff on on air so people can see, you know, what it actually looks like. I have no problem with him.这都不能做了就从我直播之后所有东西都没有了对这就是我觉得难熬的东西因为我没有生活当时就觉得度秒如年还不是度日如年是度秒如年因为我还有小助理在旁边所以我会互相搭档一下对可能真的是有有有的时
where a student, he stands in front of all of these military tanks from the Chinese government and tries to stop them. And I've also looked at both sides where people saying that it wasn't real and that no students or civilians actually got harmed in that massacre. And then there are other people. We actually have soldiers that were alive during that time that said that things definitely did happen during that time. And there's also footage of them carrying the bodies on stretchers and trying to run and get the bodies out of the way from being smushed, basically. So no matter what you believe, there definitely were people that were killed during that time. It doesn't really matter to me, you know, what was dressed up as a hoax, what was real as far as the whole thing, but I care more about the students that actually were killed and how that affected everyone during that time and how this became such a horrible moment in history for China. That's why I care about the most because it's the death that makes it, you know, a, a part of history. So just this whole situation, hopefully this guy still has a platform. It's sad that this has been censored and that there are people that still want to tell their story and they can't because it's still being blocked and they're still trying to pretend like, like, la da 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 da, it didn't happen. No, 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 I don't want to hear it. No, 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 don't say anything about that. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. I mean, it's like how in America, slavery is kind of like that. Like, people want to talk about it, then they don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you know, it's like, which one is it? So, you guys, this is a lot to think about. Follow my social media, mostly my Instagram. Also, have a blog on East Asian pop culture. The link is always down in the description box below. And remember, be real. Stay real. Live in the real. And I will always be back. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. I will see you in the next video.